Hello again everybody and welcome back to another episode of An Ecologist Plays. As you can see we are back in the jungle, we are back in green hell. It is night time and we are choosing this amazingly dark time to go and explore the gold mine that we encountered last time. So let's just find a nice way down. Oh, we have got a whole bunch of macaws sitting everywhere, resting everywhere. This apparently is quite a safe spot for them, which is most likely why one of the reasons why they are congregating in such large numbers. We're just going to climb over the trunks over here. So this area seems to be where they were looking for gold. Just have to be always on the lookout for anything dangerous. And it's quite possible that this lower area here would be flooded. You can see quite a lot of water also accumulating here. Speaking of which, would be a good idea to actually set out our bowls to catch more water. Oh, we've got two more now. We can really get a lot of water at a time. And because it gets flooded quite often, they've got a little bit of a pump here to pump out the water as is needed. So we've got a toad hopping along, this here being a cane toad. We will talk about cane toads later on because they are quite invasive in many areas of the world. So we'll talk about them at a later point. Here we've got an old campfire. So quite a lot of buildings here. Let's see, what have we got in here? So there's new dialogue. Can't seem to read anything here. Anything useful? Ah, here we go, a note. So there's a, a group one, a group two, there are a whole bunch of women here, Sophia, an American, there's a kid, there's one with a tattoo, <laughs> a whole bunch of descriptions of people, uh, so a whole bunch of names, I don't recall, I don't think I've actually seen any of those names before, uh, a needle looks like some kind of operating that was done here, interesting, can't seem to find anything useful. Uh, looks like someone was attempting, uh, blood transfusion here. There's a lot of it on the chair and the floor. I doubt any of the patients actually survived. Why would they do that? I wish I knew. Or, on second thought, maybe I don't. Okay, so blood transfusions are being done over there. Let's see whether this... Gives us any information whatsoever. Uh, this looks like, yeah, this is a pay slip. So there's one individual that was sick and then received no cash in the week, team two. Team three, three people were sick, didn't get any money. So to then group team one, also one person that was sick. So interesting. Um, seems that they were mining for gold here, not, but not really finding anything. Uh, useful at least. Let's see here. Okay, they're getting rid of the water. Uh, lots of gold. Yay! They need to have, yo, they need to get quite a lot of buckets per person done. Um, and yeah, week 10. Everyone's sick. Malaria, mercury poisoning. Hope it, hope it ain't some outbreak. Well, unfortunately, it seems that is quite possible what it's quite possibly what was happening, some kind of outbreak. So it seems some individuals were getting sick and then people were getting more or and then more and more and more people were getting sick. So this is Tango. I met with the tribe. I'm now at the circle. It's in the blood. Children, the children are the key to your copy and interference. So this, huh. So this is definitely, they were listening in and they were listening to any radio conversations that were being had. And it seems the important note to take there is it's in the blood and children, children are the key. So whatever the mystery is in the story here, it seems that the children are the key. And then we've got a gold sack that we will take with us. It doesn't serve any purpose whatsoever, apart from, you know, being heavy and, uh, also, at the end, if you complete the game with that in your backpack, you get an achievement. Now, I haven't been able to do that, so I'm going to try and get that on this playthrough. Always, whenever it rains, put out your bowls, catch fresh water, because fresh water is worth gold in this game. And that's coming from the guy who has a bag of gold in his backpack. Now, we did pick up beef jerky, so let's eat that, and that should give us most of the things that we need. We'll leave the bowls out here 
for if it starts raining again. And let's, I think, let's explore a bit more. So we came from that side. That's where the elevator was. Let's see if we can find anything on this side of this camp. Okay, so far looking quite all right. Not too dangerous, although I'm very sure, as I said, that we're probably going to be in danger soon. <laughs> I'm in danger. Okay. Interesting. What have we got? We've got drums over here and... Is it it? Oh. oh. Okay. Um, human remains, and not just a little, a lot of human remains. Um, okay, this doesn't look good. Hello, we shall call you Stephen. Hello, Stephen. Sorry, I'm just going to step on you here. Let's see, we've got a note that we can read. So it seems they were monitoring people. They were looking at two guards changing regularly, pistols and machine guns. Okay, around 20 people in the cages. Uh, okay, padlock won't open. So I'm going to leave this up for you to have a look at. The talks of sick people again, potential outbreak of some kind of epidemic. Uh, huh, sick are being controlled. So dead bodies burning. Okay, so not sure what happened here. Uh, injected uh, the person with something and he threw up. Isabel says it was a blood transfusion. Okay, so it seems people were captured, they were put in cages, blood transfusions were done on them, and eventually people died and were burnt. Okay, so the bodies were burnt. This does not bode well. What, whoever did this, I do not want to encounter them. Thank you very, very much. So our ledge is there. At least we now have got the grappling hook. We managed to get that in the camp, so that is quite good. And now we should be able to go to Lambda 2 if we wish to. And we can actually progress a little bit more with the story. Okay, so this just seems to be a little bit of a section that goes out. Doesn't seem to be anything useful on this side. Nor up until now something, anything particularly dangerous. Except for the fact that there were lots of dead people there. I would consider that probably quite uh, dangerous or a sign of danger. So I think that's pretty much it for here. Which means I think we should just head a little bit back. Okay, looking on the map, we are in this general area over here. So it seems to be a dead end to this section. We've kind of wandered along and we are approaching this elevator again from... From which side are we coming? We're coming from the east. So yes, we are coming from this side, heading towards the elevator. We first have to go just get our bowls um, so we can carry on with our little adventure. We should now have quite a lot of water that has accumulated in them. And we are quite alright in terms of most of our macronutrients. We are a little bit short on protein, but I think we will you know, do something about that later. Now again, with all the macaws here, not only would this be a relatively safe, safe area for them to actually rest or to, 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 to roost, it's also again where they can eat clay. And as I've mentioned before, with the macaws, they're feeding on seeds or nuts and all kinds of uh, plant parts that could be deadly. It contains quite a lot of alkaloids. And in order to cope with that, they eat clay. And the clay will then bind with the alkaloids, the toxins in the seeds that they eat. And then that just means that they don't get poisoned by the fruit or the food that they eat. And generally you would find that macaws and other parrots would visit these clay banks at least once every two, three days. So for them it is quite important to regularly come. And when they do visit, as you can see here, they generally do come in relatively large numbers. And that is because it's quite dangerous to come down to these clay banks one or two at a time because the bright yellow uh, types of macaws in this case, or the red ones, would stand out quite drastically against the dull background of the clay banks. So coming in large numbers, there's always at least one that will be able to spot danger, such as birds of prey coming closer, and they're then able to escape as a result. You also find a very similar thing with things like sand grouse in the desert regions here in South Africa, where they will wait until there are quite a lot of them, and then 
quickly all of them together come down to drink water because just coming one or two or three or five at a time you're going to have the lander falcons or other birds of prey swooping down and catching them and if you are you know one of only five sand grouse there there's a good chance that you are going to be the one that gets eaten but if you are one in a hundred then there's a far smaller chance of you being the one that gets eaten so safety in numbers ah there we go going up the thing with safety in numbers being twofold, firstly there are, there's a greater chance that one of the lot will be able to spot any danger approaching, but then also secondly it means that when danger, danger does come, there's a smaller chance that you are going to be the one that gets killed and eaten. So one of you will have to die, but there's a smaller chance of you then being that one. So you know, safety in numbers. And as the, as we always say, also, just you don't have to be the fastest, you just have to be faster than the slowest member of your group. Oh dear. Do you hear that? <sighs> okay, that is one of the natives just outside this cave, probably. And he does not sound very happy. So we are going to carefully approach, see if we can see where on earth he is. I can hear him, maybe coming from this side, let's have a look. Now we've already been attacked by them once, there he is, right over there, just beyond the leaves on that side, okay. He does not seem to have spotted us yet, now we've been attacked once by them before, again having a whole bunch of war paint on his body it's quite probable that we would be attacked by attacked by him as well if we yeah he's not very happy if we don't take the first shot he is going to come after us so i'm being uh, it's time for some aggressive negotiations oh shame okay Seems to only have been the one, and uh, it's quite possible that if we didn't get rid of him, we would soon have been in danger. Uh, this spear here is in better condition, so we are just going to take it. It's not as if he is going to need it. Okay, now that we have sorted that out, let's just stand over here. And let's look at where we actually are. We are at 4018. So 4018, we are right over here at this cave entrance here. I think let's wander along on this side, see what we find all along the wall again, and then we'll head a little bit more inland and go see if we can go through here and get to the Lambda 2 location. So let's wander along here and hopefully find a way through today. Okay, so there appears to be some kind of bridge that we can cross here. Actually, not sure exactly where we are. 39.17, somewhere here. So this is probably to get just to the other side there. Might as well try to cross it. Why did the Jake cross the trunk? To see what you could find on the other side. Okay, let's see. What can we find? Okay, just another viewpoint over here. And there again... We, that's where we were earlier, the gold mine site. Okay, so carrying on, however. Okay, um, I see a structure up ahead. No idea whether there's anybody home. Yes, there is. There he is, okay. So there's at there are at least two people there. There's one, there's one right in front there, and then one at the back. Quite possible that there are more over there as well. There's a third one as well, a little bit more to the left-hand side. Okay, let's take the best vantage point. Get rid of the one closest to us first, then we'll take out the rest. We are ready with our bow. Let's say a little prayer quickly, and off we go. Uh, okay, that one's still alive. 
Now he's dead. Okay, there's another bowman over there. Oh, there's one threw me with a rock. Okay. Oh, okay. They are throwing stones at me. Oh, there's a spearman right here. Hello. Goodbye. Uh, hey, stop throwing the stones at me. There we go. Oh, there is still a bowman somewhere. Okay, let's just head in this direction. I'm not very keen on getting injured. We've gotten rid of a... One bowman. There's one. Ah, okay. Oh. I think there is still one more. I'm pretty sure I still hear movement. Although, in all honesty, at this point, it could just be my imagination. Let's just get some of our arrows back. Uh, you had a spear. About the same condition as mine. Hello. Oh, got a fright from the ragdoll there. Not quite sure. I think I'm hearing the armadillo. Okay, so yeah, there we go. There's a little armadillo. Just casually minding his own business. You know, ignoring the death and destruction that's happened all around him. It seems that's everybody. Okay. Sorry, people. Unfortunately, we had to massacre this tribe here. And again, with this guy over here, you can see the Koteka, the penis god, which I was talking about previously. There's an arrow right next to it. Almost impaled him in his vulnerables. So let's just head over here. And the Kotekas, again, being made from a hard-skinned cucumber or gourd that's grown specifically for this purpose. And it is a sign of the tribe that you belong to. So let's see. Now that we have, you know, gotten rid of the tribesmen here, let's see whether there's anything useful that they have for us. A tribal fire starter. Ha! Ah. Now that's going to be useful. We can get rid of our hand roll. I think it's thunder that is falling from the sky again. And hopefully not a jaguar or something like that. It's hopefully thunder that I'm hearing. Okay, and we have got a smoker over here as well. Also going to be very useful if we want to keep our meat fresh for longer. We can then smoke it, and that is not going to rot as quickly. Oh, and a bone knife. Okay, cool. So, oh, I'm... Goodness, I am pretty sure I'm hearing another puma. Yes. There's a puma here somewhere. And I can't see it. Oh, my word. Okay. Just going to get onto this rock. There he is. Hello, Mr. Puma. My wife said I should wait for them to get closer and then shoot them. So... There we go. Headshot. But unfortunately, I am bleeding. Which means that we now get to use... Ah, there we go. Ants on our laceration. Now, believe it or not, ants can be used as makeshift stitches. And it is actually an extremely old but extremely useful way to make sure that lacerations like the one we just acquired are actually treated. So what you'll do is generally, and you can see it on the arm there, you can see the head of the, the heads of the ants over there. You generally find the big soldiers of termites or ants or certain termites or ants. You will find that. Okay, and we can't treat it with a bandage now. Okay, so we'll just wait for that. So what you do is you take the soldiers or the, the big ass ants and you then... Uh, aggravate them enough so that they actually open up their jaws and then you let them bite your wound. And what that then does is they, they grip and you break off the body and then they just kind of stay there. You, you kill the ant while it is gripping you and in the process you stitch up the wound that you have just gotten. It's an extremely useful way of actually making sure that you treat your major wounds. So um, I found it awesome 
that in this game that you can do that as well. Now let's just look what have we got that we can potentially get rid of. I think we can, no, that's littering. I think, there we go. Just getting rid of that one stone enables us to walk again. And now we've got the issue of armor being damaged. So as I've mentioned previously, there's broken armor. If we get attacked, there is a good chance that our armor could break. So let's make some new armor. Again, stick armor, relatively simple to make at the beginning that we currently are in. Later on, we are going to make the extremely useful bone armor, which would be a little bit stronger. For now, however, we have got the stick armor, which is, I think, all we need for now. So let's see, on the map, after that commotion, we are here. Let's head a little bit more southeast, see what we've got over there, and then we'll decide what to do when we get there. And while we are walking, might as well tell Mia that we have killed some people. Mia. I met a tribal warrior. Your voice sounds strange. Wh what happened? He attacked me. Oh my... Are you okay? I killed him, Mia. I had to. I've never... <gasps> Mia. Cariño, breathe. You can't let it get to you. I'm glad you're still alive and talking to me. You're right. But I'm afraid it might happen again. What if there's more of them? Just keep thinking about me. You have to survive for me. Yes, we will keep thinking about you, Mia. And there's a rattlesnake, which we can also think about. Might as well hunt him, harvest him, and then carry on. And what we've got? A broken bridge over here. Wonderful. So we can't do anything about that now. And this will be as good a spot as any to quickly set up a little shelter for Jake to sleep because he is again getting tired. He's always tired. Now we are right over there. I think let's head more in this direction. See if we find any shelter perhaps along this cave or this rock face here. A little cave perhaps that we can actually use as a shelter because if we can... Uh, find a little shelter we can cook meat which means that we should then be able to get our proteins up which means that we then shouldn't fall asleep as quickly or get exhausted as quickly there's another rattlesnake to the left there there's a peccary as well might as well hunt this rattlesnake as well meat is meat yeah, we really need to do something about those proteins. And I just ate with dirty hands, which means we now have a parasite, which then means that our nutrients are going to be depleted more quickly. Thankfully, we can cure that by eating the blue, I think blue lactonia it is called, the little mushroom over here, which also gives us a nice bit of energy. However, we have to still carry on looking for a cave for us to make a little fire and potentially find a safe place for the night. Oh, look at those! Oh! Those little guys there are baby tapirs. Hee! <laughs> Run away, little one! Ah, uh, don't worry, I'm not going to hunt you now. Now, we could hunt them and get the baby tapir skins, which we could then use for drums or to make drums in this game however we're not going to hunt the little baby tapirs so the babies looking very different from the adults the adults being a monochrome or just being dark brown in color the babies having these white spots and lines Ooh, rattlesnake hello Ooh, no bad rattlesnake but good rattlesnake meat meets back on the menu boys Okay, so as I was saying, the little baby tapirs make such cute sounds. Having those spots and lines all along their body as well, which the adults do not have. Interesting. Okay, we need to get down there, I think. 
while we have got this vantage point, might as well look to see if we see anything dangerous. Not yet, not down there at least. But we do need to find a way down that does not involve us injuring ourselves too badly. Okay, this may be the way down. We actually were just here. We just got our blue Leptonia mushrooms from up there. Now we are heading down this way. Let's see if we find anything useful. Do we need carbs? Yeah, might as well eat a banana. It's going to be good. Okay. And carrying on with our little mission over here. We still need to find a way further down. We are currently 3921. 3921. We are currently right over here. I think let's head for this general area over here, which will be south southeast. That direction. Okay, but well, we've got to go around here in order to go there. Okay, I think we may have found a cave. Although it also seems as though we found an aeroplane. Huh. Well, part of a plane. Oh, there's the rest of the plane. Okay. So this is some kind of plane. And a cave. Okay, a place to sleep. This is going to be a good spot to make a fire. So we're going to be able to do that. We're also going to just set up, set out our rain capture little bowls here. I seem to have again forgotten my tortoise shell somewhere and now I can't even remember where. I'll have to have a look at the tape here. Here. I'll have to have a look in the video afterwards to see where that was. All we need for now. In any case, um, we're just going to <laughs> again go and hunt some tortoises later on. Unfortunately, we've lost some nuts. Okay, that's okay. I still have my two nuts, that's okay. And we're going to get nice water in the coconut bowls there. And we just need to make a little shelter for us to be able to save the game here. So now that we've got this nice little cave to inhabit, we've got a shelter that we can save and sleep. We've got a nice log bed here to also sleep. Lots of coconuts stored up as well. We are going to end it here for today. Jake is also quite tired, which means next time we have to find our way from where we currently are just around here, somewhere either along there or perhaps through here, we'll have to see. Go up the grappling hook and go and see what the Lambda 2 location is all about. However, next Friday we will be back in Sim Safari for another episode of that. So join me then two weeks from now when we are going to have another episode of An Ecologist Plays Green Hell to go and find Lambda 2. Until then, stay safe and I will see you soon.